Okay. So I hope I gave you guys at least a, a, a little bit of time to take a look at your tests um, with a colleague. Know that like how we started today, taking a look at a selected response and kind of going through a template and having our peers look at it. We will start our next session that same way around constructed response. So kind of similar to what we just did, but um, uh, more so like we did at the very beginning where it was a little bit more intentional with putting sticky notes on it and taking a look at it. But these are some of the, um, these are the things that we're going to kind of highlight. Um, and some of the most important parts, at least when I was writing constructive response questions when I was in the classroom, um, I found that my language that I used, like whenever I'd write a question, it sounded really great like in my head and I even thought it was great like when it was on the paper. And then I would get responses back from kids and I would be like, what? were they reading this really great question that I wrote? And that was pretty good feedback for me that maybe my question wasn't as great as what I thought it was. And so that's part of why I had asked you guys to talk with someone from a different content area. Because as a math teacher, if I had another math teacher look at my question, mathematically they would have probably gone to at least a similar place that I went to when I wrote the question. However, if I had had the social studies teacher who taught across the hall from me look at my math question, I probably would have learned right away that it was a crappy question. So um, that's why we kind of had that. That's why I asked you to talk with someone else from a different content area. But do we have an example up here, um, and it's so tiny to read, but I'll kind of go through with you why they consider this kind of a, a flawed example. And perhaps the easiest ones to showcase this on is a, a, an ELA example. But a couple of things that they highlight here um, is they talked about how these, this claim and target piece didn't align. But probably the biggest thing was that this text that they had the kids read, uh, if you can see this little tiny baby seven up there, this is a grade seven assessment, but this is actually like a, a fourth-ish grade maybe um, text that they're reading. And then the question, what does the word crafty suggest about the fox, um, is, is, is too open-ended. And it's not, even, it's not even indicating to the student that they should use examples from the text to prove what it is the question's asking. So um, just kind of another example of if I would have asked someone else to read this, um, they would have probably been able to give me pretty good feedback right away that I'm not going to get the types of responses that I would hope to get from students by asking them this question. So what we're going to have you guys do now is we're going to have you actually take a look at some of the, some of the good constructed response um, questions that are in our Smarter Balance um, examples. So Mark is going to pull himself away from his computer in a second and he is going to pass out some examples. So we do have um, some very specific math examples for you to look at and then uh, we actually gave the ELA group um, a fiction so it's really ELA-ish, and then we have two nonfiction selections to have the um, science and social studies folks take a look at. So we're going to pass those out, um, just give you some time to kind of look at how they constructed it, um, and just have conversation about what you see, are there any surprises, um, any ahas that you have um, looking at their constructive response. So we'll get those out to the table and then give you guys a couple of minutes to take a look at those, okay? All right.